everyone. Welcome to this episode of Arthritis at Home. I am Cheryl Cohen with Arthritis Consumer Experts. We host uh, this program, Arthritis at Home, and we're really happy that you could join us today. I'm so excited uh, to be able to share the studio today with Dr. Uh, Marie Westby. Uh, simply put, she's just a genius. She's someone that I've known and have worked with for years and years uh, as a, a patient involved in uh, health research. Um, Dr. Westby uh, is a clinical resource therapist in the Mary Pack Arthritis Program in Vancouver, British Columbia. She holds a clinical scientist position in the Center for Aging, uh, SMART, Vancouver. She's also a clinical associate professor in the Department of Physical Therapy at the University of British Columbia. That you have spent the better part of your career doing research on post joint replacement, specifically knee and hip rehabilitation and how it can get better for patients, but also for, for practitioners, for your colleagues in the physiotherapy uh, business, so to speak. And I think that's one of the reasons why I glommed on to you so early on in our, our patient uh, researcher partnership was because I saw the work you were doing as so vitally important, um, given lack of standards across the country in terms of what's being done for patients, uh, in terms of their physiotherapy post joint replacement, but just how positive it is and how powering it is for the patient uh, and how through your work you can actually change someone's experience of uh, total joint um, replacement. So I'm going to just start with the obvious at the beginning, um, which is to ask you if you can share a bit of background about not just this research project, but kind of what has been the journey leading you to this project. Sure. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, and it has been my life work, I realize. I know, um, I know. So my background is as is a physiotherapist in the Mary Pack Arthritis Center. And some of the very earliest uh, patients I worked with were those um, living with arthritis that didn't respond to medications or physiotherapy and had to go on to have a, a hip and knee replacement. And we provided that care at the arthritis center. But when talking to people, I, they were telling me stories that, oh, their neighbor didn't receive that, or they received more care, or my cousin in another province got this service. And so it became very obvious how inconsistent the care was, not only across the country, but even within the province and even within our own health region. So inconsistency was one thing that really drove me to, well, why is that? And is there some sort of standard that we should all be trying to meet. And the second thing was then looking at the qualities. So there were no standards developed. Um, there was no uh, best practice guidelines at the beginning, which is one of the very first things we uh, developed. And we were hearing reports and observing and even looking at the research at what people were doing and studying. But some of the care people were being offered was really not um, up to up to a standard or at a level that really was going to have a meaningful benefit to them. So it was both the quality and the consistency of care that really drove my interest in going back to school and, and learning how to do research in a formal way and then pursuing this question since then. Um, to develop some best practice guidelines um, through a Canadian US uh, sort of consensus process. And then uh, take move forward with that to actually sort of operationalize those guidelines through developing quality indicators. And quality indicators are based on the evidence and research, again, with a group of patients and surgeons and clinicians coming to agreement on what is the minimum standard of care people should receive in the period leading up to, so prehab, yeah. while they're in the hospital and post-acute or once they're discharged from hospital in terms of rehabilitation. Right. So we develop those quality indicators, we publish those results, and the next stage that we're involved in now is how to get that information out to both patients so they know what to ask for and to clinicians so they know what to offer. Yeah, you know, in today's healthcare system, uh, Dr. Westby, it is more important than ever as a patient, and I speak from experience. I've had a total a knee replacement, as you know, um, and as I think a lot of our audience knows because I've talked to them about it. 
Um, so much of the quality of my care today comes from how much I know about what to expect, what I should expect from the healthcare system. And uh, it's so powerful having that information as a patient because you can then query, right? You can then question, and I don't mean in a uh, disrespectful or rude manner, but simply to say, shouldn't I be getting X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z? And for me, that really uh, hit home when I was going through my own rehabilitation process and I was in a group session and I was listening to different people's experiences. And even through some of the focus group work we've done with you, I was shocked that someone who lived literally three kilometers away from me, but had their joint replacement done in a different area, different hospital, had two sessions of post-surgical rehab. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I was getting 12. Or someone actually was given chits or little coupons to go get theirs, go search out. A like, I was shocked, Dr. Westby, at how disparate Mm -hmm. the approach to this very critical piece of the whole joint replacement process uh, is, was, and is. So um, yeah, just a, a little proof of, of a proof point there to, to your message about lack of standardization. Mm -hmm. And this isn't the fault, anyone's fault. It's that the research hasn't been done yet and implemented through policy. And that's what you're trying uh, to do now. So you know, now that you've talk, told us about this project, um, I know, and our audience will now know that you've launched uh, a survey for people who have had a recent hip or knee replacement. Um, it, it's within what, three months? Within four months. Four months, sorry. Within four months, uh, that survey has been launched. We're going to share that information at the end of this uh, chat with you. But what are you hoping, share with our audience what you're hoping to learn from the survey? Well, first of all, I'll backtrack a little bit. A few years ago, just before COVID, we did a similar survey with clinicians, mostly physical therapists who yeah. provide rehab care and got their perspective on, on the quality indicators and are you providing the standard of care? And that was very interesting to see how they self-rated themselves. And we saw lots of discrepancies as we expected with different aspects of care and uh, across the provinces. So now we would like to get the patient's view, their, their lived experience, and whether they felt they received these different standards of care. Yeah. So first of all, it's a bit of a what we call like a cross-sectional snapshot of care from the patient's perspective. And why we are eliminating it to uh, having had a joint replacement in the past four months is it's quite a, a, um, a detailed recall of your experience. We're really asking you to dig back and ask everything from how many sessions you had and whether these various aspects of care were delivered at the beginning and throughout the course of, of your surgery or your rehab. So when we tested that recall period uh, in our pilot testing, the patients who participated in that said, really anything beyond three or four months is really hard for me to remember yeah. those details. So that's yeah. why we narrowed it down. So we're going to get, a, again, another snapshot of the possibly the inconsistency and a better idea of the quality of care across Canada. And hopefully we get enough responses from every province that allows us to look province by province. Some provinces have some great um, at the system level programs in place to help people along the continuum of care. And we'll be able to look at sort of the quality of care from a patient's perspective and match it to that. And other provinces have a very disjointed approach. But we're also trying to find out which aspects of care, there's 10 quality indicators, and we'd like to see which of those 10 are, are the most problematic. Where are people consistently saying, no, I, I didn't receive that, or that wasn't offered to me? Because that will help us target our efforts and the tools and the resources we develop for both clinicians as well as patients so they can advocate for themselves like you did. They can right. share their expectations and they can say, well, I actually re read here that um, I should probably be having this done, or can I ask for you to assess this on me? And so it will help us to narrow down our efforts a little bit in ongoing education. So in terms of almost like rank ordering their importance from, from the patient perspective. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. I just want to underscore this part about uh, um, people being eligible to participate from, you know, up to four months post 
it is really difficult to remember in detail what has happened unless you keep a very careful journal and and mm -hmm. some people do and some don't um but for our audience out there why that's so important is if if you don't have the greatest recall but you're answering survey questions it's it kind of skews the data it doesn't give you the most accurate data and we remind everyone that these data, you know, you take them in aggregate, and if, if in fact, there's rigor behind the approach and the statistical analysis of the data, that is the way physicians, clinicians like yourself, make big sort of decisions for big groups of people. So it's really important that the data be precise or as precise as possible. And that's, again, why there is a limited kind of window of opportunity for participation. Um, so we definitely want to get this message out, you know, far and wide. Um, if you know someone that has had joint replacement surgery within the last four months, please send them this episode. Uh, they're going to get a link at the end of this uh, chat that will direct them there as, as well. But just wanted to underscore, Marie, why uh it's 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 important for that data to be recalled um correctly if, if mm -hmm. you will um so how long is the survey open and right how now long does it take a person to take it oh yeah now it's a detailed survey so it yeah. will take anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes when we did our pilot testing because we are asking a lot of questions we figure this is our one chance to yeah. capture all of this information across canada um, and we're hoping that without the amount of effort people have put into their rehab, they can take that extra 20 or 25 minutes to kind of reflect back on it and share their experiences with us because it's going to be so tremendously helpful for us. The survey right now is open till the end of February. And what we do is we kind of monitor responses from each provinces. Um, we look at how many people who have had a hip replacement versus a knee replacement are responding. We'd like a fairly equal balance. And we will extend that survey date um, if we, um, d you know, find that we do not have enough people, because yeah. we won't be able to answer all our questions or do all the different types of analyses we'd like to do if we have too few. Okay. And it's interesting. I mean, it's still lower than pre-COVID, but there's still close to 100,000 people a year in Canada who are having a hip or knee replacement. And so if we, and if you look at just the four month window we're looking at, we only need about two to 3% of people who've had a joint replacement in that period of time to do this survey. And we will have enough numbers, just two to 3%. Wow, so, so here's my big push to the audience. Um, as a person who has been a patient partner in research for many, many years, as someone who's been a patient in the system with rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, and many other sidecars of complaints, um, the reason we do this, we, the reason we encourage you to get involved if in fact you meet the inclusion criteria on this study is because what you tell us will help the next person going through the process. It is really about altruism and about helping your community overall, coast to coast, get better health care. And, and we are integral to that quality improvement process um so i'm that's my hard pitch to you i'm I, i'm the i'm the used car salesman of our arthritis research today <laughs> uh this is so important um so please share this again with anyone that you think might be eligible to participate in the study end of february but we can't extend it you're suggesting uh, maria if we're shy on responses but i'm hoping you're going to get a deluge following uh this air date Last question, and then we'll let you run and go do, uh, I know, the many important things you have on your agenda today. Um, tell us in real terms how this research will benefit people having a joint replacement in the future. You know, the reason for helping or contributing to this research is to help your fellow Canadians, but it also help yourself. Many yeah. people who have had a single joint replacement go on to need the joint on the other side replaced or another one. So by completing this and having this information out there and published and available in different formats and toolkits and sort of clinician and patient friendly resources will help you. Hopefully you don't have to, but if you were to have a future joint replacement, first of all, you'll know what to expect. 
you'll it'll help your conversation with your both your surgeon as well as your therapist afterwards in terms of what you can expect from rehabilitation. Yeah. Hopefully it'll arm you with sort of the knowledge and the confidence to have that conversation with your clinician. If if the clinician is following these recommendations and you have them in front of you in the format of a sort of a tracking form or checklist, you'll be able to be confident that you're getting the best quality care and that that's the same standard of care that your friends, neighbors, uh, relatives in other provinces are also getting. The, the key thing also with um, with these quality indicators, it, they're not meant to be just applied to public sector or private. Um, these indicators can be applied to whether or not you're receiving rehab in an inpatient facility, which is not that common in Canada, um, in a private practice clinic, in the uh, outpatient department of a hospital, in your own home, or even virtual. So what it will help you to do is to make sure no, no matter what you're offered in terms of rehabilitation, you can be confident that you're getting at least the minimum standard of care. And we are hoping to prove with our research that that results in better outcomes for you down the road and that you'll have a better overall rehabilitation experience. Yeah, boy, just the fact that I could feel more confident about what I'm getting as care makes me happy. Like that I can feel confident that I'm getting you know, the, what I should be getting mm -hmm. and that, you know, there aren't people who, uh, and this happens in, for underserved communities, they're always getting less, hence they're underserved. Mm -hmm. um, so this I'm assuming is going to be across uh, race, gender, ethnicity, like we're talking about really delivering on equity in post joint replacement care across Canada through this research. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter if you live in a more remote community, your access to a physiotherapist is done through telehealth or infrequent yeah. visits. There's still standards and things that you can follow and you know you can ask for with confidence because that is the minimum um, that the evidence in the research shows is important for your care. So it'll be our job to get the word out widely across clinics, hospitals, um, in communities throughout BC and hopefully across Canada at some point so that patients can confidently seek out a rehabilitation uh, service or a physiotherapist and, and show them, you know, the different resources and say, are you able to provide this or are you even familiar with yeah. these standards? Because yeah. you want to go to someone who is meeting at least those standards and says, yes, oh, actually, I'm quite familiar with, with that Um you know, that toolkit, the equip toolkit and the, the quick toolkit for clinicians. Um, and you'll be receiving all those elements in your rehab with us today, this period of time. That's terrific. Uh, I, I'm ex as excited as ever about this work. Uh, Dr. Westby, you've been such a champion for patients like myself across the country in your, within your peers, you know, you've been talking up your work and getting newbies into your research field, which I love. Um, so everyone in our audience, if you're a patient, please share this with someone. If you're someone who has had a joint replacement, either hip or knee, within the last four months, please consider taking the survey, one. Two, if you're someone who is in physiotherapy, even occupational therapy, or if you're a healthcare provider, please share the link with your patients you think may be interested in this study and who meet the inclusion criteria. It really does take a village to advance research, medical and health research. Um, so join our village and, uh, and share and share widely. Um, and uh, I wanna thank you again, Dr. Westby, for joining us, for highlighting this very important piece of work that you've got going on right now. Uh, I know I'll be seeing the results because I'll be working with you on this project. <laughs> Um, and we look forward to sharing the results uh, with our broader audience at Arthritis Consumer Experts through our newsletter and our Joint Health Expresses, our social media platform. Uh, it's all about learning and then sharing uh, with others. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, our Arthritis at Home audience. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care. Great. Thank you.